Okay, this is a brief overview of some of the things that can go wrong with the kidney, uh, some of the effects of certain medicine, medicinal drugs on the kidney, and um, I'll talk a little bit about kidney transplants and uh, dialysis. So, ways in which they can ask you, this is really ways that they're testing your understanding of uh, things like ultrafiltration and the action of the loop of Henley. So what can go wrong at the ultrafiltration stage? So, um, if you have a much higher blood pressure than usual, so people with high blood pressure, which is called in technical terms hypertension, uh, might find that because their blood pressure is high, the pressure in the glomerulus here is much higher than usual, and more things get pushed across. Now usually that filter, that uh, the Bowman's capsule in particular is a molecular sieve, uh, that basement membrane won't let anything across that's got a higher relative molecular mass than 68,000. However, if you've got high blood pressure, you might be forcing larger things through that sieve. You know, if you push something hard enough through a narrow doorway, it will, if it's got enough given it, get through. Uh, same with these molecules. That might mean that you have then things like protein appearing because there's no mechanism for re reabsorbing that around this whole system. You might get protein appearing in the urine as a symptom of something going awry with the ultrafiltration mechanism. Holes being too big, blood pressure being too high. <coughs> um, other things that can affect it are things like blood loss, vomiting, diarrhoea, Anything that is going to take this blood pressure down. So if you're losing a lot of blood, if you're, uh, if you're losing a lot of water out of your blood because of severe diarrhoea or vomiting, then that's going to lower the blood pressure and you're not going to get as much filtrate. It's going to lower that filtration rate, uh, which again, will, that will automatically, if you like, prevent you producing uh, urine. So your urine um, output will go down. And this is very often, if you have a major operation in hospital, they'll, get, they'll, they'll come around and ask you, you know, how many glasses of water you've had to drink. They'll kind of tot up about how much in volume that is. And I'd sadly have to wee into a, a, a graduated jug so that they can measure your urine output. So that they know that there's nothing going on untoward with your filtration rate. Uh, obviously a very low output in in comparison to what you're inputting might indicate there's a problem with the uh, filtration because of some internal issue. So that's sort of something that could go wrong. We talked a little bit in, a, in the bit about the proximal convoluted tubule about renal threshold. So remember that if your glucose level in your bloodstream is too high because you have untreated diabetes, then that sugar will there'll be too much glucose going past the carriers for it all to be reabsorbed. Now once it gets to the end of the proximal convoluted tubule, you can't reabsorb uh, any more of that glucose. And it stays inside of the filtrate as it goes around the loop of, of Henley. Which you think, well, not too much of an issue, it just goes round and straight out and it's unaltered. But what it does is it lowers the water potential of the filtrate so that you actually get a much less water potential gradient between the filtrate and the medulla and the razor rector. So less water will leave the descending limb. So if less water leaves the descending limb, it goes, the water comes all the way around here. And then irrespective of the ADH, again, you've got this lowering of the water potential by uh, the glucose. And again, not enough water will be reabsorbed from the collecting duct. So what happens is that you get a much bigger volume of urine, um, which is less concentrated. And of course has glucose in. So the glucose is really handy for diagnosis. Um, doctors in the past used to sip it to see if it was sweet. So that made being a doctor not quite the job that you would want. Um, uh, so 
obviously if you're losing more water than you're taking in because of the glucose in the urine thing, then obviously it's going to cause increased thirst. So sort of the early symptoms of diabetes, things that your doctor might ask you about would be uh, excess urination, having to get up and go to the toilet in the middle of the night because you're filtering it and not reabsorbing as effectively, um, and increased thirst. So that's the sort of glucose thing. Obviously alcohol appears in urine as well, which is why policemen take urine tests for uh, if you've been involved in a car accident and they suspect that you've been overindulging. But uh, pretty much alcohol is, you know, it's a solute, so it does this kind of same thing as glucose, but it also interferes with the ADH system. If they're going to ask about that, they're pretty much going to, um, they're going to give you the information. There are also some different drugs that act on the loop and do things like perhaps prevent salt being pumped out in order to make you lose more, um, more water than usual. That's what your grandparents call their water tablets. It's to uh, get rid of excess fluid effectively. So um, they, they might block sodium chloride transport out so that there's less sodium chloride in the medulla and therefore uh, not as much of a water potential gradient on this side so you don't reabsorb as much, it carries on going round, you don't reabsorb as much from the collecting duct and it ends up in the urine. Um, so what happens if your kidney sort of decides to pack in entirely is that uh, initially certainly you would be put onto a dialysis machine. Now what a dialysis machine is, <coughs> is effectively it is a semi-permeable membrane, it means it will let some things across and not others, that runs between, so you need your blood to be flowing past in one direction, and you need the dialyzing fluid to be running past in the other direction. Now that is for the same, exactly the same reasons that blood and water flow go in opposite directions in bony fish. It's just a much more efficient system. What happens then is that your excess water will osmose across the urea will go across and of course you want your dialyzing fluid to have um, some glucose in it so that you don't actually lose too much glucose. So the composition of dialyzing fluid uh, is really quite a sophisticated uh, thing. So you want it to take, remove water, excess water from the blood because that's the job of the kidney. You want it to remove excess urea from the blood because that's the job of the normal kidney. Um, but you don't want it to be removing glucose from the blood. So a dialyzing machine will uh, is a quite a large affair. Uh, generally you'd be having that in hospital. They'd be connecting you up to a, di you know, a, di a dialysis machine with needles into your veins and all the rest of it. And it'd be noisy, cranky machinery moving fluids around. What sometimes you can do is you can have home dialysis which is what we call peritoneal dialysis where they're actually using, instead of having a sort of an artificial cellulose semi-permeable membrane, they're actually using your own membrane that surrounds your abdominal cavity which is called the peritoneum as that semi-permeable membrane. So what you have is you have a little um, tap affair that goes through your abdominal wall, which is muscle, and through that membrane. And you connect up to that effectively a drip bag full of dialyzing fluid. That flows down into your peritoneum. The blood vessels adjacent to your peritoneum then give up their water and urea. And then you empty that uh, the fluid from your peritoneum out and then have to start again. Now obviously these fluids and then in your peritoneum you've no movement. So eventually everything will reach equilibrium so it has to be done a bit more frequently um, uh, but it, it's more portable and doesn't take as long. So effectively you know, you're talking about sort of an hour 
half an hour at a time, but maybe doing it three times a day, whereas for a full-on hospital dialysis, you might be looking at three or four hours, but are maybe only going twice a week. Uh, so that's dialysis. Um, oh, and of course, ideally, what you would want is a kidney transplant. Now, the kidney transplant doesn't go in where you think it would. It's not a case of they open up your back and sort of, you know, take one kidney out and replace it with a different one. Uh, it's actually put in uh, down really near your groin, in your kidney, and connected up to your femoral artery and vein. Um, so that's where the, where the blood supply is coming from instead of from the renal artery. Uh, what is important with kidney transplants is the tissue type, so the getting a genetic match as close as possible to cut down the use of immunosuppressant drugs afterwards. And of course any surgery involves risks all of its own. Okay, that really is it.